Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish, and you are going through an Azure Administrator Associate AZ-104 examination course. In this lesson, we're going to learn about users and groups. Let us have a quick look into what are the things we are going to learn in this particular lesson. We will start with learning what are the types of user accounts available within Azure. Then how are you going to manage these user accounts? If you happen to have multiple user accounts from on-prem or other identity sources, you will learn about how can you bulk upload these user accounts into Azure. You will touch base on what are the different types of groups and how do you manage these groups within a, your Azure Active Directory? What is the use case scenario of Azure AD Connect and how can you use Azure AD Connect to synchronize your on-prem users to your Azure AD? How do you make sure that your Azure AD Connect is on healthy all the time? Towards the end, we will learn about Azure AD B2B and B2C, which is business to business and business to consumer. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So let's first learn about the types of user account. You access user account or log into your Azure portal, select Azure Active Directory and click on users. This is where you would be able to see all the users who is part of your Azure Active Directory tenant. Typically, Azure AD defines users in three ways. Typically, Azure AD defines users in three ways. Cloud identity, directory synchronized identities, and guest users. So let's look at the first option, which is cloud identities. These users exist only in Azure AD. So as you can see that this one is not synchronized. This is a cloud born user. Example are administrator accounts and user that you manage yourself. Their source is Azure Active Directory or external Azure Active Directory. If the user is defined in another Azure Active Directory instance, but needs to access the subscription resource controlled by this directory. When these accounts are removed from the primary directory, they are deleted. The second type is called directory synchronized identities. These users exist in an on-premises active directory. A synchronization activity that occurs via Azure AD Connect brings these users to the Azure. Their source is Windows Server Active Directory. And finally, the last type is called guest user. These users exist outside of Azure. Example are accounts from other cloud providers and Microsoft accounts such as Xbox Live account. This type of account is useful when external vendors or contractors need to access to your Azure resources. Once their help is no longer necessary, you can remove the account and all of their access. So let's learn about managing these user accounts. There are multiple ways to add cloud identities to Azure AD. The first place where you can manage these user accounts is in the Azure portal. So you can add a new user through the Azure portal. In addition to the name and the username, there is a profile information like job, title, and department, which you can give as well. When you try to add a user, you can start by either creating a new user or invite a user as well. When you send an invitation, you can add a personal message to that invitation as well. There are certain things you need to consider when try to manage a user. You as a user must be a global administrator to manage users. User profile picture, job and contact information is optional. Deleted users can be restored for 30 days. And sign in and audit log information is always available for you to check. Please note that users can also be added 
to your Azure AD through your Office 365 Admin Center, Microsoft Intune Admin Console, and CLI. So how do you bulk add the user accounts into your Azure Active Directory? There are several ways to do that. You can either use PowerShell um, or you could use the CSV format. So let me quickly go back to the Azure portal to show you how to upload multiple user account using a CSV file in Azure. So I'm now in my Azure portal. I'm going to go back to Azure Active Directory and click on users. If you are going to use a CSV file, here are some of the things you need to think about. Click on bulk options and click on bulk create. First of all, you get an option to download the CSV template. Then you can edit the file and finally you can upload the CSV file. So I'm going to download the file. Let's open the file and see what are the information we need to provide. The information you have to give are mentioned over here. Name of the user, it's a mandatory field. Username, it's again a required field. Initial password, do you want to enable block sign in or not? Then the first name, last name, job title, department, user location, etc. So these are all the optional fields. All the required fields have to be filled. First, the naming convention. Establish or implement a naming convention for usernames, display names, and alias. For example, a username could consist of last name and then the password. Implement a convention for the initial password for newly created user. Figure out a way for the new users to receive their password in a secure way. Methods commonly used for this are generating a random password and emailing it to the new user or their manager. Azure AD allows you to define two different types of groups, security groups and Office 365 groups. Let me quickly show you where you can find the groups in Azure Active Directory. So I'm going to go back to my Azure AD, click on groups. When you try to create a new group, there are two options, security groups, and Office 365 or Microsoft 365 group. Let me tell you the main difference between these two groups. First, security groups. These are the most common and are used to manage members and computer access to shared resources for group of users. For example, you can create a security group for a specific security policy. By doing it this way, you can give a set of permission to all the members at once instead of having to add multiple people and multiple permission to each members individually. This option requires an Azure AD administrator. Right, the second option is Office 365 group or Microsoft 365 group. These groups provide collaboration opportunities by giving members access to a shared mailbox, calendar, files, SharePoint site, and more. This option also lets you give people outside of your organization access to these groups as well. This option is available to users as well as admin. The next thing we need to learn about is adding members to the groups. There are different ways you can assign access right. The first option is assigned. Then there is a dynamic user. The third option is dynamic device or security groups only. So let me explain these three concepts in detail. So I'm in my Azure AD and I'm trying to create a new group. After you, pro after you select the group type and provide a group name, group description, you can come to the membership type. You can select dynamic or assigned membership for this group. There are three types. The first one is called assigned. Assigned lets you add specific users to assigned lets you add specific users to be members of this group and to have unique permissions. Dynamic user lets you use a dynamic membership rules to automatically add and remove members. 
If a member attribute change, the system look at your dynamic group rules for the directory to see if the member meets the rule requirement or no longer meets the rule requirement, etc. And the third option is dynamic device. In this option, this lets you use a dynamic group rule to automatically add and remove devices. Just like dynamic users, if the device attribute change, the system looks for your dynamic group rules. Let's talk about Azure AD Connect. Azure AD Connect will integrate your on-premises directory with your Azure Active Directory. This allows you to provide a common identity for your users for Office 365, Azure, and SaaS applications integrated with Azure AD. So let me quickly take you through steps where you can download the Azure AD Connect and connect your Azure AD Connect with your on-premises ADDS to your Azure AD. So I logged on to my Azure portal. On the left-hand side, you can find Azure Active Directory. Within Azure Active Directory, under Manage, scroll down till you find Azure AD Connect. Click on Azure AD Connect. This is where you can find the Azure AD Connect details. So I have already downloaded and installed this on my on-premises domain controller. Otherwise, you would be able to download the tool straight from this portal. Or you can go to Microsoft Download and download the Azure AD Connect and install on your ADDS as well. As you can see that my Azure AD Connect is already connected and the sync status is enabled. The last sync is more than a day. You can see that another option called password hash sync is enabled as well. I don't have federation. I don't have seamless single sign on and pass through authentication enabled. All of these things are disabled. I can click over here to monitor my on-premises identity infrastructure. Click on Azure AD Connect Help. So I can come over here and I can download and install the Azure AD Connect Health agent as well. Let me take you to my on-premises ADDS and show you some of the features of Azure AD Connect. So I logged into my on-premises domain controller. So this domain controller is installed with Azure AD Connect and all the users and groups is already syncing back to Azure AD. So I'm going to launch the Azure AD Connect. Since this has been installed and configured, I'm going to quickly show you what are the configurations options you can do post installation. You can go and see the privacy settings, view the current configuration. So let me quickly show you what is the current configuration looks like. It says that it is synchronized to this directory. The account used is this one. And as you can see that what are the synchronization settings which is enabled? Azure AD app settings, Azure AD app and attribute filtering is enabled. You can see that group write back is disabled. Password write back is disabled. Auto upgrade is enabled and device write back is disabled. So this is where you can see all the options. One of the important option is pass, password hash sync, which is enabled as well. So I'm going to go back and show you how to customize the synchronization option. I'm going to customize the Azure AD Connect. The first step is to connect to your Azure AD tenant using your global administrator username and password. Right now, this is establishing a connection to my Azure AD tenant. So now it is connected. So click next. If you would like, to, if you would like to modify any settings over here, this is where you can change to different directory, different forest. You can add a new directory as well. Click next if you don't want to modify anything. If you look at it, uh, my domain is ingramazure.ml. So the whole domain is being synchronized. But if I, but if you would like to just modify and synchronize a selected OU. Within your on-premises domain controller, you can untick this and create a new cloud OU where you can specifically put your users and groups 
users and groups which you would like to move to uh, Azure AD. I don't want to make any changes over here. Click next. Right. So these are all the optional features which we are talking about. So we talked about password hash synchronization. So what is password hash synchronization? Password hash synchronization is a sign-in method that synchronizes a hash of a user's on-premises AD password with the Azure AD. Then we have another option called pass-through authentication. So we can download and install an agent. If you, if you do that, pass-through authentication is a sign-in method that allows users to use same password on-premises and in the cloud but doesn't require the additional infrastructure of a federated environment. Then we have additional options like group write back, device write back, device write back, etc. So you can basically turn on and turn off these features based on your requirement. So you can turn on the Azure AD apps which you would like to add or restrict access to. What are the Azure AD attributes you would like to export to Azure AD? And some of the directory extensions as well. So once you modify it, you can click next to configure the changes what you have made right now. Another feature which I would like to highlight is called health monitoring. And Azure AD Connect Health can provide a robust monitoring and provide a central location in your Azure portal to view this activity. So let me take you through the place where you can find the Azure AD Connect Health. So let's look at Azure AD Connect Health. Azure AD Connect Health provides a robust monitoring of your on-premises identity infrastructure. It enables you to maintain a reliable connection to your Office 365 and Microsoft Online services. This reliability is achieved by providing monitoring capabilities for your key identity components. Also, it makes the key data points about these components easily accessible. So let me show you where you can download the agent and install Azure AD Connect Health on your on-premises server. Log into your Azure portal and go to your Azure Active Directory. Under Manage, you would find Azure AD Connect. Within Azure AD Connect, scroll down to the bottom till you reach Health and Analytics. And then click on Azure AD Connect Health. So this Azure AD Connect Health helps you monitor and gain insights into your ADFS server, Azure AD Connect, and ADDS as well. And then Azure AD Connect helps you monitor and gain insight into your synchronization that occurs between your on-premises ADDS and the Azure AD. And finally, you can use Azure AD Connect Health to monitor and gain insight into your on-premises identity infrastructure that is used to access your Office 365 and Azure AD applications. So with Azure AD Connect, the key data you need is easily accessible. You can view and act on alerts and set up email notification for critical alerts and view performance data. Using Azure AD Connect work by installing an agent on each of your on-premises sync servers. So let's understand how can you manage multiple directories. In Azure Active Directory, each tenant is fully independent resource. A peer that is logically independent from other tenants that you manage. There is no parent-child relationship between the tenant. The independence between the tenants include resource independence, administrative independence, and synchronization independence. So let's understand this concept in a bit more details. So I'm going to give you a high-level overview on what are these three types of independence we are talking about. Let's talk about the resource independence. If you create or delete a resource in one tenant, it has no impact on any resources in other tenant. If you use one of the domain names with one tenant, it cannot be used with any other tenant. That is called resource independence. Let's look at administrative independence. If a non-administrative user of a tenant 
creates a test tenant called test, then by default, the user who creates a tenant is added as an external user in that new tenant and is assigned as the global administrator role in that tenant. If you add or remove an administrator role for a user in one tenant, that change does not affect the administrator role that the user has in the another tenant. Let's look at the synchronization independence. You can configure each Azure AD tenant independently to get data synchronized from one single instance or either. You can use the Azure AD tenant connector for Forefront Identity Manager to synchronize data with one or more on-premises forest. All right, so we have reached the last topic for this module. The last lesson we are going to learn today is Azure AD B2B and B2C. B2B is business to business and B2C is business to customer. So let's talk about Azure AD B2B. Azure Active Directory business to business collaboration lets you securely share your company's application and services with guest users from any other organization while maintaining control over your own corporate data. You can work safely and securely with external partners, large or small, even if they don't have any Azure AD or an IT department. A simple invitation and redemption process lets partners use their own credentials to access your company resources. And developers can use Azure AD B2B APIs to customize the invitation process or write applications like self-service sign-up portals, etc. So with Azure AD B2B, there is no external administrative overhead for your organization. The partner uses their own credentials and identities. Azure AD is not required. And you don't need to manage external accounts or passwords. And finally, you don't need to sync accounts or manage account life cycles. So now let's look at B2C or Azure AD business to customer. Azure AD B2C provides business to customer identity as a service. Your customers use their preferred social, enterprise, or local account identities to get sign-in or single sign-in access to your applications or APIs. So Azure AD B2C is a customer identity access management solution capable of supporting millions of users and billions of authentications per day. It takes care of scaling and safety of authentication platform, monitoring and automatically handling threats like denial of service, password spray, or brute force attacks. With Azure AD B2C, you can invite users from other social media identity tenants into your own organization tenant. Then users provisioning is done by this invited party and you are in control to invite the other side of users. And with Azure AD B2C, you can facilitate identity verification and proofing by collecting user data, then passing it to the third party system to perform validation, cross scoring, and approval for user account creation. So congratulations on finishing the first module of this AZ-104 Azure Administrator Examination course. In the next video, we're going to go through the review question for the module one. So the module one was all about identity. We learned about Azure AD and we, re and we learned about different features and functionalities comes with Azure AD. So let us go and review those questions. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.